Hi everyone, I'm Tommy. I'm Mackenzie. And welcome back to Backstage Thoughts. Today we have some more cast member stories for you. Um, I think both of them are going to come from me this time though, instead of one from me and one from Kenzie, because Kenzie decided that her experience was too boring and she doesn't have any more interesting stories to tell. I just can't think of any. It's not that it was boring, I just can't think of any like great stories that I should tell. Apparently, a lot more crazy things happen to you when you're working at one of the most popular attractions in Magic Kingdom versus when you're working at a quick service restaurant at a moderate resort. So different attractions, different rides have different ways of dealing with guests that are in wheelchairs. I don't really know the details for other rides that well because I've never really been in that position and I've also never worked them, but at Pirates, our regular queue is entirely wheelchair accessible. Um, the queue is wide enough for people with wheelchairs to comfortably fit throughout the entire thing, and there are no stairs. So what we do is when people come up in wheelchairs, um, we let them know you're just going to go in through the regular line, you're going to wait in line just like everyone else, and once you get to the front of the attraction, or not the front of the attraction, the load area of the attraction, someone will be there to take your wheelchair from you, you're going to have to transfer into the boat, and then when you get off the ride, that wheelchair will be waiting for you at unload. I've kind of gone into details about how um, the whole wheelchair system works at Pirates in the video where I talked about how I caught a kid peeing backstage. We have a position at Pirates called Mast. It's the person that stands out front of the attraction. Um, every attraction has one of these. Usually they call it Greeter, um, but at Pirates it's called Mast because, you know, boats. And the person at Mast has a couple of responsibilities. Responsibility number one is to greet the guests when they walk in. You say hi, you say welcome aboard, um, things like that. Responsibility number two is lesser known but more important, and that is to scan for boarding restrictions. For example, um, people riding ECVs, right, the scooters, they cannot bring those in through the line. Um, what they have to do is they have to park it. We have the parking area, so you, whoever's at Mass is going to direct them to the parking area, tell them that they have to park their ECV. If they need a wheelchair, there are courtesy wheelchairs available for them to use. You can take the courtesy wheelchair all the way up through the queue. And once you get on the ride, um, there will be another courtesy wheelchair waiting for you at unload when you get off. Another boarding restriction you're looking out for is things like food and drinks. Anything that doesn't have a cap can't be sealed has to be finished before you get on the boat. So you just let them know, hey, you're gonna have to finish that um, because whoever is grouping or whoever is at load is going to make you throw it out once you get up there if it can't be sealed. Balloons are another one. Um, lots of guests have balloons. You can't bring balloons on the ride. What you have to do is we have a little rope um, and they just tie them to the rope and then they can come pick them up when they get off. And then another boarding restriction. I probably, there are probably others that I, um, forgot, but another boarding restriction is wheelchairs. And wheelchairs aren't a boarding restriction in that you can't ride if you're in a wheelchair. You just, anytime you see someone with a wheelchair come through, you're supposed to ask, are you comfortable transferring into the boat? It's going to be one or two steps into the boat and then one or two steps out of the boat when you get off. Are you comfortable doing that? Uh, and if they say yes, you say awesome, have fun. If they say no, um, well, things get a little bit more complicated. Um, most of the time though, you just kind of say, well, you're going to have to transfer into the boat in order to ride this. If you're not able to transfer, unfortunately, um, you will not be able to ride. You can have people assist you with that transfer. You can take as much time as you need, but if you're not going to be able to transfer at all, unfortunately, you cannot experience this attraction. There are also signs, like multiple signs out front of the attraction that say that you must transfer, right? Um, that's probably something, if you've ever been to any amusement park, that's something you've seen. Um, it's like a diagram where it's like a person like with an arrow, like getting out of a wheelchair into another thing, and it says must transfer. Um, we have those signs at Pirates as well, letting people know if you're in a wheelchair, um, you have to get out of the wheelchair to get on the ride. You can't take the wheelchair itself onto the boat. So on this particular day, at this particular time, I am in the load area somewhere. I'm not sure exactly. I think I was working wheelchair at this at this point. Um, I don't think I was grouping. Yeah, I was definitely working wheelchair at this point. Um, so I'm standing in the load area waiting. Again, I've talked about the responsibilities of the wheelchair position in that kid peeing video. 
Um, but essentially, I'm just kind of standing there waiting for wheelchairs to come. Once wheelchairs come, I collect them. Once I have a couple wheelchairs, I take them down to unload so that guests can have their wheelchairs when they get off. You forgot to mention that strollers can also qualify as wheelchairs. Well, that's something that's going to become important in story okay. number two. Right now, not a super important detail. Story two, very important okay. detail. And I'll get to the... Um, <laughs> there are requirements for that in a little bit. So I'm working wheelchair, and a guest comes up pushing, pushing another guest into a wheelchair. I'm like, all right, that's my cue. So I walk over, um, and that's kind of what I do. I kind of just hover there until they're, you know, ready. Once the guest gets out of the wheelchair and onto the boat, I take the wheelchair. Most guests are, like, mobile enough that they get out of the wheelchair, like, way ahead of time, like before they have to transfer. But obviously different guests have different, you know, um, abilities and restrictions. Um, so there are some guests that need to take that wheelchair all the way up to the very last moment. Um, and that seemed to be the case here. So I'm waiting. The boat comes in. They're in um, row six, the last row. And a lot of the times we'll put guests in wheelchairs in row six because it is the easiest to transfer into the boat. The first five rows... Um, the dividers between the rows are too narrow, so you can't really get the wheelchair in there. So if the guest, you know, isn't capable of walking for a little bit, um, they're not going to be able to transfer as easily. Whereas in row six, the dividers are much wider. You can fit the wheelchair right up in there, um, and it's just one or two steps to get into the boat. So they're in row six. The boat comes in. Uh, I'm waiting there for the wheelchair, and the it looks like a probably a man in his... 50s maybe pushing a man in his 80s or 90s it looked like a a, a son pushing his father um and the the one doing the pushing turns to me and says they they told us to go into row six with the wheelchair but how are we supposed to get the wheelchair on and i'm like they're like we need a row for the wheelchair and i'm like well we you can't bring the wheelchair onto the boat you have to to transfer into the boat um, the reason they told you to go to row six is because you can push the wheelchair all the way up and it makes it easier to transfer. And he's like, he can't transfer at all. He can't walk at all. I'm like, well, you you need to be able to transfer into the boat. Like, you, you can't take the wheelchair onto the boat. It's not possible. And he starts getting very mad at me. Um, not just the one pushing the wheelchair, but also the old man in the wheelchair starts getting very mad at me. Uh, and I explained to them, um, and first of all, I, before I, I get to the explanation, I realized there's two possible things that could have happened here. Um, the first possible thing, and this is definitely a possibility, it does happen, is whoever was at mast missed them. Um, you know, they were doing something else, they were trying to help someone out with a lightning lane issue, or they were distracted by something, or they just weren't particularly good at their job, and they just didn't say anything to this, this party. Um, and just let them get in line without letting them know that they needed to transfer. That is a possibility. And if that's the case, right, obviously it's not this group's fault for not realizing this. The other scenario, which I personally think is a little bit more likely, is that they just brushed off whatever the cast member said to them at Mass. They were just like, yeah, yeah, he's fine. Um, and the reason I say that is because that happened to me a lot while I was at Mast. I would be like, you know, I'd start going like, hey, are you able to transfer? And they're like, he's fine, he's fine, they're fine, she's fine. Um, without even really listening to what I had to say. So I think both of those are definitely real possibilities. Um, I'm not going to assume that one or the other happened. Um, but it is possible that they didn't get the treatment that they should have gotten at MAST. When they got to, like, the front of the line, like, where the grouper is, would that person have, like, reiterated that they had to transfer? Um, not necessarily because you're assuming that they already know that. Okay. Um, since he sent them to row six, I'm assuming what happened was they probably said something about him being in the wheelchair or needing, so they sent him to row six because they're like, okay, if he needs, you know, extra help with the wheelchair, yeah. send him to row six. Um, but the grouper is working under the assumption that they already know that. And at that point it wouldn't really matter because you already waited the entire line. So. Yeah. So I do, yeah, I did I did sympathize with them a little bit because they were mad that they waited like 40 minutes. No, they, they said they waited like 
an hour and a half in line or something like that. There is no way. It is quite literally impossible. Our line has never been an hour and the a half. The line would be all around adventure. Land. Right. <laughs> no shot. It was an hour and a half. It was like 30 to 40 minutes at the absolute most. Um, but they were all mad. They were saying they were waiting an hour and a half. And I do sympathize with them, right? They wasted some time. And what I could do here, what I could have done here was given them um, recovery is what it's called, right? Given them essentially a, a free lightning lane pass to use at another attraction to make up for that lost time. And I would have done that had they treated me a little bit better. No, they, they, they did not. They were not polite. So they did not get that free lightning lane. Um, both of them uh, decided to, to yell and, and curse at me. And specifically, the, the older uh, gentleman, the one in the wheelchair, kind of took over at this point. Like, the son kind of backed off a little bit and was like, all right, whatever, let's just get out of here. Um, but the, the father was not having it. Um, he started, you know, screaming about how this is fucking bullshit. And um, he's like, why'd they change it? You used to be able to take the wheelchairs right on to here. Um, and I calmly explained to him, um, as far as I know, that's never been the case. These boats are the original boats since the ride opened. We've, the boats have never changed. So I don't believe that's the case. You know, maybe that was the case in Disneyland. I'm not sure about that. Or maybe you're um, confusing it with a different attraction, but Pirates has never allowed wheelchairs to go on the boats. And if you think about it, it makes sense, right? There's a drop. How are you going to have a wheelchair on a ride with a drop? Like, I guess you could strap it in somehow, but like that would take up so much extra yeah, time. It, yeah, yeah. And that, I don't think that would be safe. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, and his response for that is, I've been riding this since before you were fucking born. As if that makes him any more correct. <laughs> so I then led them out um, through kind of the backstage exit where we take the wheelchairs. Um, because there's no other way that they're getting, they're getting out, right? Um, so you're like, turn around and go back through the line. <laughs> yeah. So I take them out that way. The whole time I'm, um, that I'm escorting them out, they're like, not they. It's the old guy. The old guy's yelling at me, cursing at me, whatever. I don't even know the specifics of what he said because I wasn't really listening. Um, but the whole time I'm just thinking, if you were nicer about this, you could be getting a, a lightning lane right now to go to whatever ride you wanted without having to wait at all. So I guess that's the moral of the story for you guys. Be polite um, and ask. You could, you know, if instead of just yelling at me right off the bat and cursing at me right off the bat, if they had said, um, is there any way we could get uh, a lightning lane pass to, to, to kind of make up for this lost time? I would have said, well, let me see what I can do. Uh, and they probably would have. But instead, they decided to yell about how it's fucking bullshit and how uh, I suck and how they've been riding this before I was born. And they know that I'm wrong and I'm lying to them and blah, 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 blah. So I just sent them on their way. The second story I have to tell today is actually sort of similar in that it deals with wheelchairs um, in a kind of tangential way. Uh, and it goes back to what you brought up earlier about strollers being used as wheelchairs. So another um, boarding restriction that Mask looks out for is strollers. Strollers are not allowed in the line. Um, we can't be dealing with bringing strollers out of there when guests bring them through the queue. That's just stupid. Um, so you're time. right. Your your kid can walk through the line, or you can hold your kid through the line. Um, so there's a stroller parking area. Guests like to leave their strollers wherever they want instead of in the stroller parking area, but that's a totally different discussion. There is an exception though. Some strollers are allowed through the queue and they are strollers with a red tag on them. Uh, the red tag indicates that the stroller is being used as a wheelchair. And the red tag is something you can get by going to, I don't know, I'm assuming like guest services or something or doing something online before you go. Um, I would assume however you sign up for DAS is probably the same way but you get the red tag. there has to be like a medical accommodation to get the red tag, right? You would think. Like technically, yes. But the same way that everyone and their mother has DAS now is the same way that everyone has a red tag for their stroller now if they want it bad enough. Um, I, like, I know not all disabilities are visible, right? Um, but I can guarantee you at least 80% of the red tag strollers that I've seen are not people that needed red tags on their strollers. They're people that didn't want to deal with their kids in line and they wanted to just have their kids sit and not have to worry about it. 
The reason I feel comfortable saying this is because 15 years ago, red tags were like non-existent. Like you did not see people that that had red tags on their shoulders. There was unless someone was like legitimately, you know, handicapped, right? Not yeah. able to walk, you know, broke their ankle or something or uh, something along those lines. Nowadays, everywhere strollers with red tags on them perfectly you know kids that hop out of the strollers and run around as soon as they get out but they have to be sitting on stroller the entire queue so um you can't convince me that the number of people that need strollers or wheelchairs has increased that dramatically it is way more likely that the number of people that have been able to persuade disney into allowing them to use it and they don't actually need it is is way more likely people are just getting more creative yeah and again right i i it sucks for the people that do legitimately need it because they get grouped in with these people that don't. Um, and for those people, I am perfectly willing to accommodate you. Um, I have no issue with that, right? Um, I just hate that the people that feel like they're taking, you know, that, that don't need it and just want to take advantage of the system are kind of making you also look bad. Anyway, um, I don't know what you need to say to get a red tag, but there are definitely some magic words out there. You say them and you, you get it. Um, and it's really, really annoying for people that work in attractions because we need to take those strollers the same way we take wheelchairs. We need to take those strollers all the way around, right? Go back to that diagram from the P story, all the way out around through the front of the attraction, through crowds of people, down an elevator to the unload area, and then walk all the way back. Um, it's a long trip and strollers are actually even worse than wheelchairs for this. Wheelchairs, you can fold up right? And you can have the whole wheelchair in one hand like this. You can easily take two wheelchairs at a time. People have even taken three wheelchairs at a time. Strollers are much larger most of the time, right? Those little strollers, those individual strollers, I don't mind. But the people that tend to go out of their way to try to get red tags on their strollers when they don't need them are also the same types of people that spend like thousands of dollars on their fancy humongous strollers that fit 17 children. And those you can't take, like, I do. I had to take two of those at a time. Um, it is not fun. It is not easy. They barely fit. Um, we've had some strollers that didn't even fit at the elevator, so we had to just leave them, like, in the gift shop and have to take people, like, had to have people go up the ramp to get their stroller because it just wouldn't fit down the elevator. Um, strollers suck. And on this particular day, I met the queen of unnecessary strollers. This person strolled on up to the load area at Pirates, port side load area, while I'm working wheelchair. And she has a wheelchair, but she doesn't have any children. Not a wheelchair, a stroller. She has a stroller, but she doesn't have any children. It's her and her little tiny Shih Tzu rat dog thing. Part chihuahua, part I don't know. It's about four pounds, and it had a tiara on its head, and its hair was, like, braided or in a ponytail or something. It had a hair tie-in, and it had a tiara on. It's just her and the dog and the stroller. Expensive, fancy-ass stroller. Yeah, I imagine it's, like, one of the, like, bassinet strollers. I don't know what that means, but probably. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> fancy stroller, red tag on it. She walks up, and they say, how many? She goes, one. And she gets online, dog still in her arm, passes the stroller off to me. Stroller's completely empty. No children to be found. The stroller was for her dog. She got a red tag for a stroller for a dog. Are you telling me that dog's handicapped? If that dog's handicapped, how is it a service dog? You can't bring a random dog into the park. The dog has to be approved as a service dog. You have a service dog that can't even walk. What service is it providing for you? so funny you're so angry about it like you're there again <laughs> it's, but it's so stupid so incredibly stupid she's like oh she i don't know if she had a tiara on too but she's like i'm the princess i'm the most imp important person in the world she had her little dog with its little tiara on and you know like you know that the way she got the service dog accommodation was the same bullshit way she got the, the stroller right accommodation yeah. first she had to be like Oh, I just get really sad sometimes, and I really need my fluffy poopykins to make me happy. Otherwise, I'm going to get depressed and kill myself. So please let me bring my dog in. And they were like, oh, fine. 
And then from there, she had to be like, well, also my dog can't really walk on its own and it's so small and useless that I'm afraid someone might step on it and kill it. So I really also need a wheelchair for my dog. <laughs> and someone approved this. Someone at yeah. Disney was like, yep, fine. Check. <laughs> Unreal. Stamped. Here's your red tag. I don't know. That's all I got for today. I'm annoyed now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Telling these stories put me in a bad mood again. I would take, you know what? I would take the guy, old dude cursing at me any day over having to deal with that woman and her dog stroller. I, that was probably the most degrading thing I've ever See, had to do in my just... life was taking her dog stroller for her to unload. What if you wouldn't have known it was for a dog? What if, like, she's like, oh, my husband has the baby somewhere else in the park? Then you don't need to bring the stroller through the queue. Okay, but, like, what if she just did on accident? Like, you can, would you, you don't, still be as angry? You can't accidentally push a stroller through a queue. She thought the baby was in it. That's a bigger <laughs> issue if she doesn't know where her baby is. That is a much larger issue. No, there is no doubt in my mind that that stroller was for that dog. There were no children to be found. All right, anyway, that's it. I'm going to go um, continue to complain about this as we hop in the car for eight hours and drive to New York. Wish so, me luck. <laughs> yeah, have, have fun with that. Um, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We do have, well, I have more stories that I can tell. So if you want to hear some more cast member stories, hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment. If you have any questions, thoughts, uh, let us know what you think about red tag strollers. Um, let me know if you would ever bring yourself to the level where you could request a wheelchair for your dog. Um, and I guess we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye.